So Samsung DeX has been creating a lot of excitement lately, and more and more people are starting to talk about this new hidden feature that Samsung's flagship phones have that essentially allows you to replace your desktop or laptop with your phone. Now, as phones are getting more expensive, they're also getting more powerful, and they're starting to look a little bit more like laptops on the inside. So Samsung DeX is becoming more feasible now, and people claim that you can use it to entirely replace your desktop or laptop. So I did just that, and for the past seven days, I locked my laptop away in a closet, and I used only my Galaxy S10 as my daily computer to really get a full deep dive experience of what it was like to use Samsung DeX on a daily basis. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my experience from this past week, and I'll be showing you the features that worked, what didn't work, and everything in between. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michael Bryan, and like I said, this video is all about my experience with Samsung DeX for the past week. Starting off with which phones can do Samsung DeX. So I use my Galaxy S10. You can use the Note 10 and you can use basically the Note or the S series as far back as about the eighth generation. Although some of the older ones will need a DeX stand and cannot use just the simple things that I used in this video. So I'll link that down in the description. I'll show you guys what you need if you have like an S8, for example, or a Note 9 or anything like that. So talking about what you need for Samsung DeX, very easy. I only need a few things and they were all very cheap. I actually already had them already for my laptop. So it was really easy to set up. The first thing is a dongle that goes from USB-C on one end to HDMI on the other end. It's also helpful if you have USB-A on there and I'll link that down below. Uh, what I use is only like $25, very cheap. Then I got a wireless keyboard for about eight to $10 and a wireless mouse for about $12. You don't need those, you can use your phone as a touchpad, but I highly recommend, if you're going to be productive on this, getting the extra mouse and the keyboard. They're not that expensive and they make a huge difference. Then the last thing you probably wanna get, although again, not necessary, is a wireless charging pad. These are maybe about $10 in most situations, and this will actually make it last a lot longer because DeX can drain your battery fairly quickly, depending on which phone you're using uh, and what you're actually using your phone for. So when I use my laptop, I consider myself something of a power user. I have a lot of windows open at the same time. I'm always doing split screen. I have spreadsheets with massive budgets. I have, you know, videos playing. I'm editing photos. I'm doing a lot at the same time on my laptop. And so translating that over to DeX, I thought was a really good test of the speed and the capabilities of Samsung DeX and of my phone. And I have to say, after using it for an entire week, it definitely kept up with most of what I was doing with the exception of actually editing videos. And that's really just a software thing where they don't have Adobe Premiere Pro that I could use on Samsung DeX right now. So editing videos, I need to use my laptop. But most people are not editing videos every day, not uploading on YouTube. So for everything else, Samsung DeX kept up really, really well. I was able to make very large, you know, budget spreadsheets and do some advanced math on there. And it just, it didn't slow down. It didn't heat up. And I really didn't face any problems. I should also note that I never turned it off. I had it running pretty continuously. Maybe at night I would turn it off just, you know, when I was going to bed, uh, just because I wanted to have my phone with me. But during the day, I would have it plugged in nonstop. And sometimes we'd be on standby for four or five hours at a time. And it never warmed up. It never slowed down. Uh, other than maybe slightly warm just from the charging pad, but that's pretty standard even if DeX is not even running. So next I wanna give you guys a quick tour of Samsung DeX. So right here you'll see that on the home screen, it's very straightforward. It looks a lot like Chrome or Windows or even Mac for that matter. So you have your home screen right there. I do recommend one of the really cool things you can do with this is you can right click on a lot of things and you get these little secret menus. So you get little shortcuts uh, that are kind of like if you tap and hold the app on your phone, how it pops up and says, you know, maybe you wanna to go to like a quick, you know, create a message or something like that. Just some quick settings you can do. I really like having that. So guys, a quick little tip here. I recommend that if you use DeX, make sure when you open up Chrome, you go over to the top three dots on the right corner and you go down and select desktop mode. That way you actually use this like a desktop and not just in mobile mode and all of your websites will show up accordingly. That's definitely a huge tip right there. Also guys, if you're new here and have not yet subscribed, but you're interested in the latest tech videos like this one, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button and the bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube will not tell you when I release the videos. So on the bottom left, then you have your DeX menu. You also have basically what's at the bottom of your phone. So home, uh, back, your app drawer, things like that are all right there. As you go over across to the right, of course you have all the open apps are on that taskbar right there. 
And then on the right, you have your notifications, your quick settings, and just some basic information. The notifications, another really cool thing is that they are interactive, just like they would be on your phone. So you can just click on one and reply to a text very easily using Samsung DeX. So getting into some of the pros and the cons and kind of splitting the two in half, I wanna start off with what I really liked about DeX. The first thing was how well the keys map over from Windows or even from Mac for that matter. So the hot keys mapped over really well, the, the copy, the paste, even like the alt tab to change, you know, which window is open, all mapped over really, really well, and it made it so easy to use. So like I said before, I'm kind of a speed user with computers, and I really like to use hotkeys a lot to make my work go quicker. So having these map over similarly to, they do, to how they are on my laptop is a huge, huge benefit. Another thing is if you use the Windows key and you hit right or left, you can split screen and you can put the app that's open on the left or the right. That's a really nice feature because like I said, I really do like having split screens. One drawback though is that you can't, as far as I can tell so far, you cannot connect more than one monitor at a time. That's a slight drawback if you are somebody that likes split screens or two monitors with split screens, you want like four windows open, you can't do that right now. But what you can do is you can have up to five apps open at the same time and you can resize the windows and have them oriented wherever you want. Some other pros here, I do like how you can have a keyboard and a mouse and they both work very easily. Uh, Bluetooth, you know, this is something that Samsung smartphones are really good at, especially the flagship phones. You can connect on the S10, I believe four or more devices at once by Bluetooth. I had four devices on there. So my watch, my keyboard, my mouse, and then I also had my watch on there and it didn't slow down, never cut out on audio, uh, and it never had any problems. I also like how fast it is to start this up and how everything's in one location. So I just plug in my phone and it just opens up Dex right away and I'm ready to go. If I restart my phone, it's maybe 15 or 20 seconds. It's really fast, especially obviously because it doesn't have a disk drive in there. So it's a little bit quicker than some laptops out there when you're starting up. And having everything in one location, there is something to be said about that. One for convenience, if you're trying to manage all your photos or all your files, I like having them all in one place, but also for a security reason of not having to email important documents back and forth uh, or otherwise having you know anything between two different locations. So convenience and safety is really nice. And another thing, I like to use VPNs, guys, and kind of like I said in my previous video, if you use Dex, or if you just honestly just use a phone at all ever in public, I really recommend getting a VPN, guys. So NordVPN is the one that I use. I have a link down in the description for 75% off if you want that. That's just what I recommend to keep safe if you're in a hotel, in an airport, in like a coffee shop, or wherever you are, just on your phone. Also notice that the temperature of this never really heats up. Some people were worried about that. At least with the S10, it never heated up. I didn't really push it too much with the Note 10. Other cool things, the apps that work really well with this, there are apps that are optimized, and most of them are Google apps, Samsung apps, and Microsoft apps. Makes sense, those are the three most productive ones in my opinion usually. So having those optimized for DeX was really, really nice. And also if you're presenting a PowerPoint from your phone, really, really nice that you can have it on your phone. Just go and plug it in to a projector wherever you want and you can actually control your PowerPoint with maybe the S Pen, for example, or with the Galaxy Watch. Just get the app for that and it's really nice that you have a remote without having one of those little clickers that you need to go and find. So getting over to some of the negatives, there are some drawbacks here, some limitations to DeX and it, you know, I think they will improve over time but for now, it's very important to know this before you decide whether or not you wanna to switch to only using Samsung DeX. So the first one I noticed was that there is a lack of optimized apps for DeX. It's just the way it is, the, you know, the aspect ratio is so different having a big screen like that compared to a phone screen. And a lot of the apps are not meant for that. They're not really ready for that. So you can force them to stretch out, but sometimes they kind of just are wasted space here and there, and it's not really totally optimized. The second thing is I noticed there was a weird quirk. This one, it seems like a very easy update actually, but if you hit the, the Windows key or whatever the command key, whatever you wanna call it, and it opens up your app drawer right there and you can search right away, that's typically how I open my apps. I, I click that, I type right away on my, on my laptop, that's what I do, and I try doing it on the phone, but one thing I noticed what, was for some reason when you press the Windows key and you start typing, the first letter is always rejected. It never recognizes, no matter how long you wait, doesn't recognize the first letter. I'm not sure why that is though. So I tried plugging a lot into this. I plugged in a flash drive and that unfortunately did not work. I plugged in a webcam and that didn't work either. I also plugged in a printer and again, that did not work. So three things that were, you know, I wish they worked on here. That would be really useful and could be a big game changer for people deciding whether or not they want to use DeX. Also, I tried plugging in an external hard drive and admittedly, this one was actually kind of stupid. I realized after the fact, it's obviously a disk drive, so it pulls power from the phone 
and it forced my phone just to kind of reboot. It, it shut down. Uh, it really it crashed. So I recommend not doing that. Don't try plugging in a disk drive um, to this. You know, it was obviously an accident, but don't do that. So another limitation with Samsung DeX, you can only have five apps open on the screen at the same time. And I think that's a little bit of a limitation for me. I like switching between a lot of different windows. And while you can have other ones uh, technically open, you can only have five on the screen at the same time. I'm sure that's manageable. It really didn't hold me back. It was just something that I noticed that you should definitely understand that's a limitation. Okay, another one, this is again, a little quirk. And I think this is really the infrastructure of how DeX was uh, you know, coded that it's sort of separated from your phone itself. So the phone interface and DeX operate independently. So if you have you know, Spotify open on your phone and then you're on DeX right now and you want to change the song, you have to either you know, go on your phone and do it or you have to shut the app down on your phone and open it up on DeX. You can't have it, you, know, you can't click and drag between them. You can't have it open on both uh, and you have to decide which one it's going to be on. Just a weird quirk. That one kind of bothered me with Spotify, but again, that's not really a big deal. You just close the apps and open them on DeX. It's not really that big of a deal. Lastly is your battery. So like I said, I keep this on a wireless charger the whole time, but if you have it just on battery, it does drain your battery relatively quickly. So I recommend if you're traveling around and you want to use this for a long time, definitely make sure you have a charger. So guys, that's everything I found from Samsung DeX from an entire week of using it. Honestly, I think most people can definitely get away with using Samsung DeX. I was really impressed that on a day-to-day -day basis, I was able to get everything done that I needed to. I really didn't have any limitations that stopped me from doing stuff. You know, maybe a few inconveniences with apps not being optimized, but most of what I do, I just do on the internet anyway. So Google Chrome is most of my usage. And other than that, it's usually Microsoft apps. So if you are somebody that uses a Chromebook or a laptop that is up to $500 in value, I would say that you might be able to justify using only Samsung DeX instead. Now there are limitations. If you're somebody that is a, you know, a real power user and you need like i7 on a laptop, obviously this can't replace that. Also, if you're somebody that likes having the convenience of a small laptop that you just open up and take anywhere you wanna go, you know, that's obviously nice too. If you have a monitor set up somewhere or if you're going to a hotel and you have a TV there, DeX is a really good alternative. And I think that's something I'll be continuing to use whenever I travel to hotels, bringing my phone is way easier than bringing a laptop and my phone. So guys, that's what I have to say about this. Comment down below what your opinion is on Samsung DeX. Do you think it's possible to only use DeX and not have a laptop or a desktop? Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.